ProGear Reviews. Uh, today we're going to be doing an experiment with hexagonal camouflage. So I've got the two times coverage um, tan and I've got the Rust-Oleum um, green and I've got Power Fist. It's like a rust paint but it's a, like a brown burgundy. It's kind of like a burnt, burnt red. Uh, after working with this product a few times, I do not actually recommend using the Power Fist line. Um, it just doesn't perform the same way as Rust-Oleum. Uh, Rust-Oleum products like the satin green here, um, just great results. And they dry with the curing time um, much faster. So you can see that I'm mixing up the colors here. Um, basically what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be... Um, doing a tricolor here. I'm going to be using a stencil from Acid Tactical and um, it is a um, hexagonal. You can see the empty squares or the empty hexagons <laughs> um, and the hollow hex. So both of those we're going to be um, filling and just to see how exactly um, not only does the stencil respond to the paint but also how um, the um, stencil um, fills in. I'm not sure exactly what kind of results I'm going to get. So uh, you can see with the red over the green and the green over the red, um, it doesn't look that good, but once it dries, it's actually not that bad. Um, but the Pelican case that's underneath this board is actually what I'm going to be doing it on. So I'm testing it on a piece of paper to see exactly what pattern I'm going to be using. Um, so I'm going to do the green uh, over the beige and the beige over the green here. And um, it was at this point, after doing the green over the beige and seeing a little bit of the over coverage, like the overspray from uh, the green on the beige, that um, I decided to uh, do the whole pelican case in beige and green. So we're going to be doing that a little bit later in the video. But what I'm going to show you is just exactly how um, the open hex and the um, like the hex um, shadow here works. I'm not exactly sure what the um, like the the hex bolt pattern is actually referred to. Um, I was trying to get like a mandrake type of uh, finish, but um, it wasn't exactly what I was expecting, but it's uh, pretty good for about 20 to 30 minutes of spray paint and um, a stencil that I didn't even use properly to begin with, to be honest. <laughs> so what I've done is I've overlapped it here. So I've taken the solid hex and I've put the um, bordering over it to see if I can mix the colors to see exactly what type of result I get. Now, I just don't think I chose the right colors for this because the the red or the brown, and when it dries, um, is so deep and it's uh, and and rich. It's it doesn't meet the um, the same type of color scheme that the matte beige and the green. So I'm doing it anyway because at this point I was doing an experiment to see exactly what kind of pattern I'd be doing, what kind of coverage I would get, and exactly how much masking I would need to do uh, to prevent overspray. So there you can see once it's dried a bit. Now one thing I found was that it was a little too cold out today. Um, one of the disadvantages of being in Canada is that the weather can shift in a moment's notice and you just don't get the same uh, result from your, your rattle cans that you would uh, otherwise. Um, so if you noticed, I did the, uh, the full hex first, and then I did the border over it on one of the other ones, and then I did the bordering hex and then the full hex fill after, and the results were not the same. If you were to do this, I would say do the um, the hollow hex, fill it in with your pattern. It might take a little bit longer, but then do the border afterwards and you'll get a better result. So like I said, on a cold day like this, um, what you want to do is you want to get a bucket of water and get some hot tap water 
or even a kettle, um, but you don't want to heat the cans too hot. And basically you pour just a little bit of hot water into the bottom of the bucket and you put your rattle cans in it because you'll avoid a little bit of the speckling and this inconsistent spray that you get out of your cans. You can see it right here where it's like it's, it's, it's deeper in some spots and then it's like a, like a fade to it. Um, so that's the best way I can recommend doing it. And once I did, you can see um, just how much shine and the difference in the, the spray and coverage that I got from heating the cans. Um, you have to be careful doing this. I have had the bottom of a can blow out. Now it didn't explode, but it went from um, concave to convex in my hand and it was a little disconcerting. Um, so I'm doing a walk around here to see just the, I've got like an old school two-tone, you know, beige and green camel here. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using this to do our coverage. One thing I noticed to avoid the overspray is that I've masked off the shapes that I'm not going to be using and I've taped it to some cardboard here. And um, I've taped both sides of it just to be extra thorough because I don't want any reason for this uh, paint to seep through because I don't want to have to redo this whole thing. Um, I did a test run of the brown on the handle and I actually kind of like the results so I did it on the other handle here and both handles seem to have a pretty reasonable result on it so I figured I'd just roll with it um, but I did the beige on the green first so I did it all around and then I did the green on the beige and I did the, um, the red. Now I'm sorry I didn't show you the direct results of just the beige and the green. Um, I actually lost that video. But you can see the overall design of just layering it, combining the colors, and just kind of rolling with it. Um, and that's what the Acid Tactical stencils.